Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Miss Angler's Biology Classroom. I am Miss Angler, and in today's video, I'm going to answer that burning question. What happens if I get a picture like this in the exam or one like this, maybe even one like this? And they want me to identify and label and tell the difference between all these gray, grainy, unclear images. Well, I'm going to show you how to tell the difference between all the images that you see before you and how to identify the organelles. So you get a picture like this in a test or an exam and you have absolutely no idea what is what because it looks nothing like the original diagram in the textbook and there's no color in this picture. So let me show you what to look out for. Let's start off with the cell wall. The cell wall is going to be this outer boundary layer that we can see over here. And the things that you are looking for in terms of the cell wall is a thick outer layer. And you can see it's quite a pale, thick gray line that sits all the way around the outside. Now, sitting just inside of that is going to be the cell membrane. The cell membrane is quite tricky to see in this picture because it's quite far zoomed out. But what you are looking at is for this very, very thin, pale black line that you can see off to the edge here. And to look out for the cell membrane, we're going to look for the inner dark line. And it's quite thin. Sometimes when you zoom in closer, it's actually easier to see. Then we're going to look out for the cytoplasm. Now, the cytoplasm is a little bit easy because basically it's all the filling of the cell. But we've got to be very careful if we're going to draw a label line, what we're actually going to point at. Now, in this image here, the majority of the cell that looks grainy, so this stuff over here, that grainy stuff that you can see, that is the cytoplasm. And it's going to be the same in a lot of diagrams. So you're going to look for a pale gray, grainy texture. And that is going to give you your cytoplasm. Then we're going to look out for the nucleus. Now, the nucleus is actually one of the easiest things to identify. And it's easy because it often takes up the majority of a plant cell. Now, what you can see here, if I draw my line all the way around it, is the edge of the nucleus. This entire thing is the nucleus. But there's actually some other things that you can look for. You can look out for this dark black circular structure, which is the nucleolus. Now, the inside or the interior of the nucleus is also quite grainy, so don't confuse it with the cytoplasm. You'll be able to tell the difference because if I remove my line here, you'll be able to see the fine edge of our nucleus. You can see it there as I uncover it. You'll be able to see that very fine edge between the cytoplasm and the nucleoplasm that sits in the center. Then we're going to look out for our chloroplasts, these guys over here. Now, how do I identify a chloroplast? Chloroplasts are a dark gray oval, and they often have thicker parallel lines in them. In other words, if I were to very quickly draw you one, they would look something like this. This is the outside of our chloroplast. And then they've got these like thicker stacked lines on the inside of them. And you can thank you see them here. And if I go over them with my pen, you'll be able to see the slightly thicker bands. Let's put it in maybe like red so we can see it. There's a thicker line. There's one. And that's what you're looking at. You're looking for these long lines. Sometimes they're parallel to each other, which makes it even easier to identify. Next, we need to look out for the vacuoles. Now, the vacuoles are also one of the easiest things to identify because they are these clear, empty, circular structures. They may not also be perfectly circular. Sometimes they're jelly bean shaped. Sometimes they're small. Sometimes they're really big. But they're always clear or white on the inside. Now, lastly, we're going to look for the mitochondria. And I'm not going to lie, they are probably one of the more trickier things to identify because they're quite small and it's quite difficult to see in this picture because of how much we have magnified it. If we magnified it a little bit more, it might actually be easier to see. So let me show you what you need to look out for. Sitting at the bottom of this plant cell are two mitochondria. There is the one and sitting right next to it is the other. Now, when looking out for the mitochondria, sometimes we misidentify them as chloroplasts, but you'll actually notice that if you now look at what the chloroplast looks like and you compare it, they look very different. When we are looking for mitochondria, 
We are looking for things that are smaller than the chloroplast. They are often oval or circular in shape, and they have these light curly lines on the inside of them that makes them very different from the chloroplast. Now, what does that actually look like when I say a curly line? Well, if this is my mitochondria, I'm looking for lines that are curling around on the inside. In other words, they're not parallel. If you remember, our lines in the chloroplast are thicker and they are parallel. In mitochondria, they'll be thin and curly. Now let's take a look at an animal cell. Now there are many structures that are going to overlap here, so I'm just going to quickly point them out to you so you can see the difference between the plant and the animal. And then I'm going to identify some of these new structures that you would only be able to see in animal cells and how to identify them. So starting off with some of the easier ones to identify, let's start off with the outside layer. Remember this thin black layer that we see on the very, very outside of a cell is the cell membrane. Then just inside of that, the easiest thing to also find over here is the vacuoles. Remember, vacuoles are going to give you that clear white circular structure. They'll look basically empty. Not all animal cells have these, but some do. That is then followed by our Nucleus. Remember, the nucleus is that big, round, circular, grainy structure. It's got a, a sort of darker central patch, this little circle over here, and that's the nucleolus. And so that's the nucleus and how to identify it. Now, the mitochondria, remember, again, are the tricky ones because they're actually quite small and difficult to see in this one. But what we're looking for in animal cells is these long, elongated um, sort of almost like a, a smarty or an M&M &M shape, some of them. And basically, because it's a, a animal cell, it can't have any chloroplasts. So these like long elongated structures can only be mitochondria. You can't misidentify them as chloroplasts because this is an animal cell. But what about some of the new things in here that we haven't identified just yet? Well, these numerous black circular structures that you can see through here, are known as vesicles. And we identify them by being small circles. They're dark, solid black often, and they're multiples of them. And the vesicle is where we store substances. That's why they're black. We can't see through them. The other new structure, which is also quite prominent in this picture once you look at it for quite some time, is this long, like, bendy network of lines that seem to be traveling through the whole cell. And if you look here, if I just take my pen through it, you'll see what I mean. It goes back and forth and back and forth. And that long network is called the endoplasmic reticulum. And it's a long, continuous line and it bends backwards and forwards. Now, I quickly included these pictures as well to help you see what these structures look like when we really zoom in on them. We've got something like the Golgi apparatus, which makes up a connection of these long sort of parallel lines. So that's the easiest way to identify the Golgi apparatus is it looks similar to the ER, but you'll notice that it's quite small. It doesn't go on forever and there's nothing on the outside. If we look at the ER, do you see that the lines are much bigger and longer and they're surrounded by these patches of graininess, you know, like these tiny little dots, which are all little ribosomes. A nice zoomed in picture also of the chloroplast over here. And there's those thick black areas, which we use to tell the difference between the mitochondria. And if you see the mitochondria nicely zoomed up here, there you can see all the curvy lines that are going on inside of it. And if you actually look carefully in some of these pictures, you can actually see like here is the ER sitting up against um, the mitochondria. Here is what looks like some kind of vacuole. And so this is a nice little thing to help you look over these pictures as well as we zoom in even closer. Now, a great way to end this lesson is to see whether or not you could actually do this and identify the structures. So pause the video now if you want to give it a go and label all the structures that you can see in this picture. And here are the answers to our practice example. Now, if you like this video and you think that it's really helped you and you'll be able to identify all these structures in your next exam or test, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and make sure you turn your notifications on because I post videos Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'll see you all again soon. Bye.